I was the first to arrive, and I was feeling a bit nervous. As you can see, I've gone for a BMW 528i, and on the internet, it looked fantastic. But I've uh, now had the chance to examine it more closely, and one or two things are giving me cause for concern. For example, it's got a manual gearbox. Now, that tells me the previous owner was the sort of chap that likes to take it to the max between gear changes. Secondly, the front tyres are Pirelli's, the back tyres are made by a company I've never heard of. So that tells me it's been run on a tight budget. I don't know what the challenge is going to be, but I'm going to be doing it like that. Ooh, hang on, that is the throb of a turbocharged flat four engine. A sound which all over the world heralds the imminent arrival of a moron. And it did here, too. It's Richard Hammond, everybody, who I suspect has started to dye his hair. Let's see what you think. Hammond! And there it is. It is, yes. It is the, well, there could be only one word, yeah. legend. Subaru Impreza WRX and is driven dead. by emeritus professors all over the world. Yeah, yeah. No, no, just hang on. Here's Vickers my thinking. Wives. I don't know what's going to face us, what challenges face us here, but think about it. Subaru stands for the toughest thing on the planet. Mm -hmm. WRX stands for World Rallycross, which the Impreza just owned. It's all there. Four-wheel drive, turbocharged estate. But you're going to look stupid doing it. I don't have to look. You've turned... I know I'm wearing double denim, and that is a mistake, but you've got Daktari trousers on and the wheels of the agri on. Uh -huh. Anyway, listen. Yes? James isn't here. No. No surprises there. I know for a fact what he's got. Go on. He'll have a Volvo. Yeah. He just will. Yes, he'll have yes, got... Yes, 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 All right, I'll get up. Cos you know he's got no imagination at all. As it turned out, James did have a Volvo. But not the sort of Volvo we were expecting. That isn't an 850R, <laughs> it is, is it? It is, it is. That's a bold call. Gentlemen. Yes. You bought an 850R. It doesn't matter, it's a Volvo. This yes, defines the estate car. Nothing else is an estate car, only this. Have you seen the tyres on an 850R? Well, there aren't any. It has tyres. Painted it's not, off. It's just a, a thin veneer of paint on a wheel. But they're high-performance tyres. It's a high-performance car. <laughs> I know. It does 146 on miles dust. an hour. As we argued, a challenge arrived. Oh, hello. <laughs> you will find the source of the River Nile. Hey. Well, that's it. That's it. But also with Livingston, Burton and Speak. As night started to fall, it was time to look for a hotel. Yeah. And Hammond thought we'd stand a better chance of finding one if we switched to the side roads, which was a great idea. Whoa! Whoa! Ah, I can't stop! Ah, you idiot! I can't stop it! Well, I can't stop it either! I'm enjoying the sounds of disaster behind me. Pulling out into the wilderness in my little mobile house. Hello, chaps. Oh, you're both stuck. <laughs> you stuck, James? Uh, I've gone into a bit of a soft pit. Are you stuck? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's find out. Oh, come on! Oh! <laughs> I've improved the styling of the Subaru no end. I'm free as well. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That was a trap, wasn't it? A bit, yeah. You evil sods. We pointed our cars at the border with Rwanda and set off on a 600-mile journey to what we now knew was the true source of the Nile. As the miles rolled by, we started to climb into the mountains. This is very, very pretty here. But we couldn't really admire the view because the road was starting to be a bit of a test for two of the 1,500 quid second-hand cars. Double bash plates earning its keep today. 
Same boat here, James and I. It's called HMS Careful. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, far ahead, my four-wheel drive Subaru was scampering along. Come on, come on. <laughs> I am king of the forest. Oh bloody hell, look at this one. How is it doing this? Oh. Absolutely no chance. Annoyingly, I had to ask the Agri Yob to come back and help. Yeah, I'll pull out. Give him a tug. I'm going to. Go, go, go. As I pull James free, Yes! Bloody brilliant, Hammond. Some locals arrived, and Jeremy decided to give them a quick lecture on his theories of off-road driving. Now, I believe in speed. Power. You try, Andrew. Power and speed yes. solves many things. Yes. Right. James, how far? Middle of the puddle. Speed and power! <laughs> Go faster! <laughs> Speed and power doesn't work. Oh, always no. It was doing quite well. It was, though. to be honest. I was surprised you got that far. Do you think you could push it out? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Which way? Oh, they lift it. Oh, got it out of the way. These guys are immensely strong. Having freed Jeremy, the men started to build him a new road. Yes! With my dues paid. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank guys. you. We were back on our way. As evening drew in, conditions started to improve. This is all feeling a bit gorillas in the mist now. It's a bit mystical. It's kind of wonderful. Thanks to my door, the Volvo had survived the ordeal. But in the BMW, my throttle problem was even worse, and my handbrake had broken. Hammond, keep moving. I can't stop. I can't do hill starts anymore. Keep going. This has to be one of the toughest days we've ever had on Top Gear. There hasn't been a single moment when one of us wasn't stuck. No car is built to survive conditions like this. N none. Not one. And there were still more than 500 miles to go. Keep going, you fool. As dawn broke, the peace and serenity of this beautiful Ugandan morning was shattered by the bellow of a wild animal. Clarkson! Last night, while Hammond and May were around the campfire discussing Uganda, 
I made an interesting modification to my car. Yesterday I discovered hill starts were very difficult. I can't ride the clutch because of the throttle problem and I can't use the handbrake because it's broken. So what I've done is fitted this log at the back. You tow it along normally but then when you want to start on a hill you let the car roll back onto it, use it as a wedge and set off easily. It's simple, it's elegant, it's brilliant. Soon we came to an uphill stretch, so I decided to test my new handbrake. Simply pop it off the back, roll it out. Watch this. Roll back. The wooden handbrake is holding me. I simply set off. Here we go. Oh, yes. So there we are. Hill starting solved. Sometimes my genius is... It's almost frightening. Well, fair dues, that, that works. You do have to tow a log about, but it, it works. I am a happy man today. Chaps? Yeah? Are we likely to see a gorilla? I hope we do see a gorilla, actually. I say in my body. So, could you do a better job than that? But look on the bright side, James. It's going to be a scorcher today. Oh, my God! Bounced up and has broken my hotel. Oh, you got a glass platform. in your duvet! Stupidest idea in history. So we got back on the road for the last few miles of our epic journey. Do you know, I'm going to put my hand on my heart and say that this is the best Top Gear adventure we've ever had. It's a noble quest in a truly stunningly beautiful country full of utterly hospitable people. And then, of course, there were our cars. A trio of 1,500 quid high milers. All had presumably been sold because their owners thought they were on their last legs. But they'd come here and they'd taken on the worst that Africa could throw at them, and they'd survived. But which had been the most impressive? Well, at the next river check, we had a chat about that. Normally, we pick one car that's best. Mm -hmm. I think on this occasion, I can't be convinced mine isn't the best. I'm and I'm good. sure you're in the same. Yeah, exactly. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't allow anybody to convince me. That so, mine in other isn't words, let's on this occasion just agree to disagree and say they're all the best. Yes. Like one of those primary school sports days. Yes. Everybody you've all, gets a prize. You've yeah. all yes. won. All the best. There are no losers at St no. Barnabas's. No, that's no let's, let's go with that. They are all the best. I think that's, They're that's all fair. The that's best. They're all done well together. Let us now go and find the source of this disgusting, scummy river. Yes. OK. Rubbish. If this were a school sports day, here's how it's worked out. Everyone's got all excited because the BMW, the fat kid, and the Volvo, the geeky, specky, nerdy kid, have both finished the cross-country course. Oh, well done, we're so amazed you did it, we're so surprised. And yes, well done there. But let's not forget the fact that the genuinely sporty kid, the Subaru, who's actually good at this stuff, also finished, and finished well. Because it's the best. Fact. Ten minutes after this show's finished, you won't be able to describe what Jeremy was driving. But you'll be able to describe this because it's got personality, character, something about it. I'm going to miss it. Now we're alone, viewers, I can tell you that the Volvo is the best car here. Because let's not forget, this is a family estate. It's a family estate pretending to be a BTCC racing car. So it's compromised as well. It shouldn't be here, it shouldn't have got this far. But it is, and it has. And that's why I love it. It has the biggest heart. 
How can May possibly say that his Volvo is better than this? It's been like a seal on the entire journey, endlessly dragging its stomach along the floor. And it broke his back. He'd have been better off doing this journey on a space hopper. And then we have Hammond's Tubaru, which is as needlessly complicated as those idiotic trousers he insists on wearing with all their special pockets and clips for mozzie spray and a hunting knife and a special compass. It's a point. I've done the entire journey in a pair of jeans and a T-shirt. And that's what the 5 Series is. It's the familiarity of home here. You're a car, you're a sitting room, you're a bedroom, you're a fridge, you're a power station that charges up my phone every night. But most of all, what you are, what you've become, is a mate. And that's what makes a car special. That's what makes a car great. You start to think of it as a person. You start to love it.